Okay guys, how's it going today? So I'm hoping you can hear me over the uh, the rain because it's absolutely pouring on the roof today. Uh, but anyway, I'll press on regardless. So I thought I'd do a video about the GWB range of G-Shock squares because I think for my money, in my opinion, they offer the most amount of uh, functions and features for the least amount of price. So I think they're well worth a look at, especially if, you know, if you're buying a new G-Shock at the moment uh, and you, you're curious about what's, what's on offer, they seem to be the sweet spot for me for the most amount of bang for your buck. So let me try and explain why. So this is the GW B5600BC1BER. Uh, and that's the black variant. There's quite a lot of different GWB something, 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 something G-Shocks. Um, and they range in price from around about $100 up to about $200. Uh, so in that kind of price range. Now, you know, there's a lot on offer from G-Shock at the moment. They, you know, you can start right the way down at sort of $40 for a basic, basic uh, G-Shock square, which will do the job, it'll tell the time. And then right at the very, very top end, you've got the, like, the full metal range, which is the GMWB range. Uh, and you know they go all the way up to about thousand dollars. The the very very top sort of patinaed metal one, and then even just a standard metal one is around about sort of five hundred dollars. Around up, you know five hundred six hundred. They vary depending on the the finish uh, of the particular model you want. But either way, the top one goes up to a thousand dollars, which is a lot of money to pay for a you know a digital beta watch. Basically, don't get me wrong, they look lovely, uh, and they've packed a lot of functions into those watches but that's a lot of money whereas if you bought one of these now i picked up this one for 120 pounds which is around about the sort of 140 150 dollar uh, mark and this one has exactly the same features functionality uh, as the very very top 1000 dollar g-shock um, just to be specific about that so this is the 3461 module inside the, this, this uh, GWB, and the metals have the 3459 module. So there's very subtle differences, but it's mainly just a very slightly different display and a couple of tiny, tiny little little differences to the module. But they, they share the same manual, so essentially they have exactly the same feature list. Um, so I think they, they just these ones here offer great value for money for you know, for this kind of price range. They're, they're kind of like, like I say, the sweet spot, in my opinion. Um, and there's some other advantages to going for one of these over a metal. There's a, a couple of disadvantages as well, which I'll, I'll come on to. But first of all, the metal range looks really nice. Don't get me wrong. They do look very attractive. But if you go for these uh, standard sort of composite plastic uh, G-Shocks instead of a metal, first of all, you're getting a lighter watch. So it's, it's going to be more comfortable. And this this sort of uh, you know resin plastic stuff basically is going to mark much less than a, a metal wheel. So the metal is going to show up thumbprints more. It's going to show up scratches more. Whereas these things, they're pretty pretty tough little little beasts. You know they don't really show up marks too much. I've been wearing this for a few weeks now, and it looks pretty much just like it did when it came out of the box, apart from a couple of tiny tiny little scratches that are quite hard to spot. But anyway, so let's have a quick look at this one here. So this one comes on a nifty little composite bracelet. So it's very comfortable and very easy to uh, change, by the way. I've taken out about, uh, I think I took out three links to fit my, my slightly smaller than average wrists. Uh, and it's got a micro adjustment just here. You've got a nice little kind of um, metal bracelet with the logo, a little rubber bit of uh, material there on the logo just so it's kind of a little bit more scratch resistant when it's on the desk things like that two button operation but either way it's it's quite a handsome little beast and it's very easy to slip on and off and very comfortable and because it's not a very heavy watch it just you don't really notice it yeah it's it's a comfortable little beast yeah i'm, I'm very happy with the bracelet and, and the the overall design of, of this little option. Like I say, it's a, a nice light little watch, so you don't really notice wearing it too much. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm 
completely happy with a standard uh, you know, plastic G-Shock strap. I think they're very comfortable as well. So if you prefer that, go for that. Um, you'll probably save a few quid because these bracelet models are slightly more expensive. But I think they just they add a little something. They add a little something. They've got a nice bit of finish going on where they've got this kind of satin uh, mixed with a sort of matte. Um, it's not metal, you know, these are plastic pieces. Um, but it feels very solid and yeah, I think it looks the job. I think it looks pretty good. So anyway, so yeah, so I think this is the best uh, value G-Shock you can get at the moment in terms of functions to price. So let's talk about those functions then. I'll bring the camera in a bit closer. We can have a good old look and I'll give you a demonstration of all the different uh, features that this one's got to offer. Let's let's bring the camera in. Okay, so now we're in a bit closer. I can give you a good old, uh, good old look at it and we can talk about all the features. So First of all, as you can tell with this particular model, they've kept it quite sparse, quite minimal. It's certainly got that traditional, you know, 80 G-Shot look. Yeah, they've not sort of gone too far away from that, uh, but they've stripped out some of the extraneous detail and they've, they've only really put in just enough to kind of, uh, just enough to sort of make it pass as, you know, very, very similar to the original G-Shock. Um, but yeah, I think they've done a good job. We've got this negative display which I'm a big fan of, and I, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, uh, but some of the other GWB uh, range of watches, they have uh, the standard LCD. There's no doubt that the standard LCD does have slightly better um, clarity. So the viewing angle is better. As you can tell with this one, you do start to lose um, the clarity of the numbers at certain angles. But in general, I think as negative displays go, I think this is a really nice uh, nice option. The black is very black, and the, as long as you're in good light and you're looking roughly directly at it, you know, you can see, as you can see, a bit of a viewing angle um, area there. As long as you're looking roughly directly at it, it's very, very clear, it's very clear. So, you know, form over function, function over form, you have to decide on that one for yourself. The standard LCD is definitely a little bit clearer, but I really like the look of this one. I like what they've done with the sort of stealthy uh, minimal look you know they've really sort of balanced it quite well it has that that uh, original 80s g-shot look but it's also slightly sort of slightly more sophisticated slightly more restrained i guess you'd call it and yeah these um these new composite bracelet uh straps i think they, they look pretty good they've got that sort of subtle difference in the um materials they've got the sort of satin in the mat and the mat matches perfectly with the watch itself and then you've got these little satin bits and then the metal clasp. I think the only, the only bit, I mean, I've been wearing mine for a few weeks now, and the only bit that is gonna wear is gonna be this clasp. As you can see, I've got a tiny bit of um, paint missing off the very corner there. That was actually from sandpaper. So, you know, it's not surprising that that did that. That was from the grip tape of my skateboard. So, uh, yeah, so you can scratch these up, but it's obviously a lot harder than it would be if the whole thing was uh, was metal. And in terms of comfort and convenience, I think they, they do a really good job, these little bracelets. Very easy to adjust. You can get it bang on right for your wrist. You can remove or add as many links as you want. And you've got micro adjustments, uh, four micro adjustments just there. And yeah, really, really easy to um, adjust, much easier than most straps. As long as you've got a pin or or the, or the correct tool, then it's very, very easy to do that. So let's quickly go over the, the headlines for the features because that's kind of what I want to tell you about. I'll give you a full demonstration of everything uh, afterwards, but let's just uh, go through the list. So a couple of things you can see on the screen straight away. Uh, we've got uh, Bluetooth. We've got a uh, multiband on this one. We've got the tough solar. Um, there's a reminder. There's a phone finder. It has an auto light. It has all the standard stuff that you'd expect out of all the G-Shocks. You know, your 200 meters uh, shock resist, obviously. Uh, world time, different time zones. Stopwatch, five alarms, uh, timer. It's also got a power save mode, which is basically puts itself to sleep if it detects that it's not moving and it's in the dark. So, you know, it would just it saves its battery. So let's quickly go through um, some of those in a bit more detail. I'll give you a full breakdown of the app and the uh, the Bluetooth um, connectivity and, and what that allows you to do because it, it, it probably does more than what you think it can do, certainly more than what I expected it could do when I when I started playing with it. Uh, the multiband, so the multiband will basically, as long as you're in the right region, which is I think all of North America and all of Europe and a few other parts of the world, if you're in the, the region that's covered by the multiband, um, it will sync up to that and basically automatically check its time to make sure it's bang on accurate to the atomic clock. So that's kind of neat, so it's got that. 
Tough Solar, as you can see from the, the sort of silvery part of the display there, that's the solar panel. And that will basically, it doesn't need to be direct sunlight, but as long as it's exposed to some light every now and again, it will keep the battery topped up and topped up. So in theory, you never need to buy a battery and obviously you never need to charge the thing like an Apple Watch or something like that. It should just keep going. And even if you put it in a drawer for like a year or so, it should in theory still be fine after that amount of time because it's got like a 20 odd month uh, reserve. I think it might be 22 month reserve. So yeah, the thing's just going to keep on going and you never need to buy a battery or worry about it to suddenly dying on you. So that's pretty neat. Um, we've got the reminder, which I'll show you a demo of that, but it just gives you little simple reminders in the dot matrix um, screen at the top here. It's just a little touch, but it's kind of neat. Phone finder, and that's pretty nifty. That's pretty cool. I think if, for those of you like, say, my mum, who loses her phone about 12 times a day at least, <laughs> I think for someone like that who maybe get a little, gets a bit absent-minded and leaves their phone all over the place, Phone finder is pretty neat. We just hold down a button, it makes the phone ring very loudly, very obnoxiously, plays a bit of techno music for you so you can phone, find your phone. Um, the range is a, your Bluetooth, standard sort of Bluetooth range. So if you've got a, like a, a medium sized property, uh, anywhere in the house it should work. Probably halfway up the garden it should work as well, depending on how, how big your property is, obviously. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty nifty. The auto light, now I never really sort of thought that that was something that I, I needed, but now I've got used to it. I don't think I'd want a G-Shock or a digital watch without it. You just kind of get used to these, these little luxuries, little additions. Um, it's quite simple when you're wearing the thing and it knows that it's in a dark environment. Um, if you tilt your wrist towards your, your face, it basically just lights up automatically and then shines the backlight for between two or four seconds, depending on how you have it uh, set up. Um, and yeah, if you sort of, I fumble around in the dark quite a lot, you know, sort of um, astrophotography, things like that. And obviously you could just press the light button and that would work, but it's much easier just to be able to, especially if you've got your hands full or something like that, you can just do that with your wrist and it lights up. So yeah, I'm a big fan of that. And I have to say that's uh, more useful than I thought it was going to be. Um, and then you're gonna have all the standard, uh, you know, attributes that all these G-Shocks have. You've got your 200 meters water resist, you know, it's, it's a tough thing. You've got your shock resist, obviously. Uh, you've got your world time with different time zones presets. Uh, your stopwatch, your five alarms, one of them is a snooze. Uh, and there's the um, signal uh, as well. So your hourly chime if you want that. Timer, uh, there's the power save, yeah, so that just puts itself to sleep uh, to save on the battery. So that covers the sort of headline. So I think I kind of need to demonstrate some of that stuff for you just so you see how useful it is. So let's, um, let me just get my phone set up and then we'll, we'll go through all of the features so you can see exactly what it can do. Because it's actually, yeah, a little bit more than I expected. Let's get that set up. Okay, so let's get into the guts of uh, what we can do with the uh, the app and the watch in conjunction. Uh, so first of all, you do have to obviously download the G-Shock app. It's free to download and it seems to be pretty well designed, so uh, no complaints there. Um, then you have to sync your phone and your watch together. It's literally just you know a couple of button presses. Very very simple. Very very quick. Then once once that's done, we can really get into you know fully controlling the watch and having a few little nifty um, uh, sort of features that you can you can utilize with using the watch and the phone in conjunction so let's run through a couple of scenarios uh scenario one so we've just bought the watch and we want to set it up we want to get our um our year month date hours seconds minutes uh, region daylight saving all the kind of stuff that you need to get up and running so as you can see right now everything is incorrect we've got the wrong day wrong month wrong year wrong everything um, let's show you how easy it is to set up on uh, this one. Now, you know, obviously on a standard digital watch, it's not exactly rocket science setting up your watch, but it's also a bit of a faff. There's lots of going through, you know, several menus, cycling through things. And if, if you're doing things like picking your, your region for, you know, your country and the world time, all that kind of stuff, you have to cycle through loads of different countries getting the right one. And it, there's lots and lots of button presses. And if you miss it, you have to sort of go full circle. Uh, so it can be quite frustrating and it can be quite fiddly. But let me show you how easy is with this one uh, so we press this button down here once quickly we leave it just a minute and we should get a notification pop up on the screen there we go now if you watch at the time we should see the time go boom 
there you go look at that perfect timing uh, so there you go so that's everything completely set up on the watch now you've got your you're going to be accurate to within half a second of the atomic clock uh, so it's done job done that is how easy it is to set up on these these bluetooth uh, g-shocks really 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 easy um, you know i know it's uh you know in this day and age you almost expect it but at the same time it's nice to see g-shock uh, you know sort of advancing and you know catching up with uh, the smartwatches and all that kind of thing for these kind of things okay so let's get into uh, something else let me just uh, tell you what i'll bring in the camera slightly closer just to make sure you can see the screen properly and yeah, we'll get into um, the rest of this okay i think that's about as close as we can get before i start losing our screen real estate so okay so first of all get the app open uh, let's come to page one here so it kind of shows you you know it holds you by the hand it's very very easy to use uh, page one we can go into a guide which tells you what every button does in every different mode um, so it's quite nice that you don't need to refer to the the manual manual so you've got it up there on your phone uh, next thing we need to do to get full control over the watch we need to have a permanent uh, bluetooth connection uh, it tells you what to do here so we hold this button here for three seconds so it says uh, connect and then it says hold and as soon as you hear that second beep uh, we let go I'll take just a moment just to connect and then we can have access to everything there we go so let's get into this so so page one is the guide uh, top left here let's get a little toothpick uh, top left here is um, your battery for your watch uh, so you know, it's going to tell you whether you need to get a bit of sunshine on it or something to give it a charge. Mine's about mine's been about half since I've bought it, so it seems to be fine. Uh, full settings is up up there. We'll cut, get into that in just a minute. Let's get into page uh, two. So page two is your world time. Um, so obviously it's pretty straightforward. We can just tap on one of these, tap in whatever city we want. Do 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 do. Uh, set it and then send it to the watch. Um, so you can set up your uh, your slots you've got your five your five sort of like uh, you know presets so you can you can flip between these quite easily or if you want to swap you know if, you, if you're a big traveler you might want to be swapping these quite a lot but you get five presets that are on the watch uh, ready to roll um, and then down here you can swap between your home time and your local time uh, like fully so that it uh, basically changes your country um, so that's that page there time and place now this is the bit I think it's worth me chatting about because they don't really talk about this in the advertising for the watch and I think it's pretty nifty uh, I think it's something that some of you may think well that's useless and some of you may think hey hang on I can use that that's pretty handy so what it is every so when I did that one press down here uh, that set the watch up it basically checked the time it made sure it was absolutely bang on accurate to the atomic clock all that kind of stuff so it did that in just one button press uh, but it also uh, logged my GPS position, so my longitude and my latitude, in my phone for uh, later reference. Um, so let's give you a, a scenario. Uh, I mean, me, for me personally, you know, I do a lot of uh, sort of wrecking of locations for, for film work. Uh, so I may want to log a position to return to for filming from, you know, like a vantage point halfway up a cliff or something like that. Or let's say you've just parked your car in a huge, vast car park and you want to get, make sure you can get, get back to your car and not lose it in you know, uh, a later point. So that one press, you just tap that and it logs your position and time on your phone. So let's just, uh, I'll just quickly try and find one that's slightly more interesting than uh, down my street. Um, but you can, oh, there quite a lot of them are, <laughs> are in the same area. I mean, there you go. I just find a slightly different one. That will do. Um, then you go into it and then you can obviously, you know, navigate the map as you would usually uh, but it, yeah, it, it, as you can see you have that red uh, stamp and that shows you the exact position I was in so I was riding around on my bike messing around you know tapping the button um, and sort of just just playing around with it really getting, getting to grips with the watch uh, and the app and so yeah that that I think that could be quite nifty I mean obviously these are things that you could do on your phone it's hardly um, you know brand new technology but the fact that you, you always wear your watch and it's just so easy just to tap a button and uh, you know log your position and then you've got it there on your phone later on if you need it uh, so there you go I thought I'd talk about that so that's the uh, the the place time and place page basically like I said so every single time you do a single press of that button it logs your, your GPS position and your time 
uh, you know, to within quite a, a, a small area of, uh, of error, you know, with the GPS positioning. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty nifty. And like I said, they nobody seems to talk about this at all. So I think it's worth me mentioning it because they don't even really sort of mention it, does it? Really, in the in the full uh, advertising for the watch. So yeah, bear that in mind. I think that's pretty nif pretty nifty. Then we come into uh, alarm timer uh, reminders. This is your utility page, and these are super easy. You've got your your four standard alarms: one snooze alarm, uh, signal, and it's very very easy just to. You know, as you'd expect, you go in, you choose your time, you send it to the watch, and it's just done. So that that alarm has now been uh, set. So really, really easy to use. Your signal is your hourly charm, uh, your little beep every hour. So I, I normally leave that on. Very, very easy. Timer is kind of obvious. Choose a time, start it off, and then it beeps on your watch. Not exactly uh, complicated. Now, reminder. So. So this reminder, um, I'll show you that uh, working up close to the screen in a minute, but I'll just show you how, you, how we set them up. So yeah, it's very, very simple again. Um, it's The only criticism I would say with this one is that it only gives you five slots. Like I personally would like to have maybe like 20 reminders, because then you could put like every single birthday of, of all your, your family members or something like that. I think that would be quite uh, handy just so that you'd have, you know, everything on your watch just in case you forgot it. Uh, but it gives you five slots, which is, you know, could be handy for, you know, remind you to go to the dentist or this, that, or the other. I've just got a couple of silly ones on there. They're pretty easy to amend. Uh, let's not amend that one. Actually, let's amend uh, this one. So you just tap away. You haven't got, you know, it's like Twitter or something where you don't have like lots of characters. Uh, but you can make a short little message in there and just say, say hi to the cat. <laughs> What's going on with my spelling there? Say hi to the cat. That will do. And when do I need to do that? Let's say I need to do that on a specific date. So we go into date. Let's say we need to do it on November the 22nd. And only once. Yep, I'm only going to say hi to the cat once. Yep, job done. And then you send it to the watch. So yeah, very, very easy to set up. So that, that's now done. So I'll probably, I'll get, I'll get that next month and think, what the hell? <laughs> Why did I do that? Anyway, so yeah, that's the reminders. Uh, kind of nifty. Um, obviously, you've got very limited screen real estate on the on the uh, the digital display there, but it's still quite quite nice that it uh, has that feature. And then let's have a quick look at the full settings. So you go into the full settings, choose the watch. Um, I'll quickly go through all of these because a lot of these would be quite self-evident. Tutorial about how to use everything. Uh, your phone finder settings. So I'll give you a demo of that in just a moment. But essentially, this just allows you to choose between a few obnoxious sort of techno tracks and then the volume that your phone rings. It's quite nice that your phone will ring even if it's on, on mute, by the way. So that's quite cool. But it does need to have the Bluetooth turned on. So if your Bluetooth is turned on, it won't work. So leave your phone's Bluetooth on the whole time, as most people probably do, I think. So that's the phone finder. Watch display settings. So this is where you can choose between 12 and 24 hour what order your day and month go, what language your um, uh, your months and everything are written out in. Uh, I, as I said before, it's quite nice that we have the day month um, option because most American uh, have the month day. And so over here in Europe, it's quite nice that we can customize it and have it the way we kind of expect it to be. And then we have uh, operation sounds, whether, the, whether it makes a noise when you press the, the buttons, basically is pretty straightforward. Uh, set the time for connecting to the app. So that's just for the auto um, connect. Let's show you that. So, oh, so, sorry, no, it's not. This is for how long it stays connected to the app over Bluetooth. No, yeah, the time adjustment, that's the automatic time adjustment, which it tends to do uh, four times a day, or you can just turn it off. So it just, it just checks the time automatically with either the radio signal or the, uh, the Bluetooth app um, going through your phone, basically. So, Light settings, so here we can have the auto light on and off. Um, obviously I said before to turn that uh, on and off manually, you can just hold that light button or you can do it through the phone two or four seconds. Um, I tend to have it on, why not? It seems to be quite useful. Then we've got power saving. So this is just where it turns itself off. If it detects it's not being used and it's in a darkened place and it's not moving, so it just puts the, uh, the watch to sleep. And then summertime, you know, if your daylight savings, whether you use that or not, I just have mine in auto and it seems to work fine. And yeah, and then, so that's it. So that's kind of covers everything that you can do with the app. So yeah, I think there's a couple of neat things. Like I said, that time and place thing is quite a nifty little thing. And I think uh, just generally having such easy control over everything 
that your watch can do through the app does make you more likely to use it. Like I will use the alarms more often. I will use the timer more often and reminders and all that kind of stuff because it's so easy to use. If something's easy to use, you're going to more likely use it. So you're going to more likely get your money's worth out of the watch. Um, you can do everything apart from the reminder. You can do everything just through the watch buttons anyway. I'll show you, um, I'll, I'll go through the, the different uh, you know, ways of just operating the watch in just a second. Um, but I think that's covered everything that the app can do. And yeah, I have to say, I think it's, uh, I think they've done a really good job of the design on this and it does seem to give you, um, yeah, it just gives you a lot more, a lot more options and a lot more sort of control. And yeah, some nifty little sort of, uh, you know, corporations between the phone and the watch, which I think works quite well. Anyway, let's, um, let's cut there and then I'll, I'll, I'll go into a uh, close up of the watch and I'll show you what you can do just with the watch by itself. Okay, let's show you the um, operation of the watch just using the, the main buttons and not through the app and a couple of the little things I haven't yet shown you. So first of all, the four main buttons, if you've had a Casio or a G-Shock before, then they're going to seem pretty familiar, but there is some differences where they've obviously had to cram in the Bluetooth functionality uh, into this little watch here. So let's start up here. So this is our light button. So a single short press will just illuminate the light. Uh, you won't, you really can't see it at the moment because there's a bright studio light on it, but this is what that looks like. And it will shine between two or four seconds, depending on how you, how you have set it up, either in the watch or in the phone. Now, a long press on this button. If we notice just up uh, here, there's a little LT. That's telling me the auto light is on at the moment, as I showed you earlier. The auto light will basically just make the watch... Uh, shine the light automatically when you tilt your when it, it senses it's in a dark environment and you tilt your wrist towards yourself so a long press on here will turn that on or off like so there we go that's off let's turn it back on and that's that button there covered and that's pretty much in every, every mode this is your light button so pretty straightforward stuff this one down here so in our standard home screen uh, so this is our home time screen uh, a short press will do our point and time adjustment via the Bluetooth via your smartphone. It will also log your GPS position on the time and place app on your phone as well. Uh, so that's your, um, that checks the time against the atomic clock via the Bluetooth. The next thing this will then do is if we do a medium press, um, it will then force a multiband radio signal check. So let me just show you what that looks like. So if we hold this button for a bit longer, until we see the RC and then we hear the beep, then we let go. So now what that's doing is it's trying to acquire a multi-band uh, radio signal um, link. And depending on where you are in the world, you're either gonna get a good or a bad signal or a no signal possibly. Uh, what, then the next thing you'll do is you'll get a icon down here telling you how good your signal is. It takes a few minutes, so I won't sort of put you through the entire experience, but there you go. So it's saying, saying L1 at the moment. L1 is bad signal, L3 is a good signal. Uh, like I said, it takes a little while, so let's interrupt it and not uh, not go through the whole thing because depending on where you are, it can take a few minutes. So let's just stop that. Oh, there you go, L3. So it's, it's getting a better signal now, uh, but it really is dependent. You should really be by a window or maybe outside to get the best kind of reception, but it really obviously depends where you are in the world. So let's interrupt that so we don't have to sit through the whole thing. Now, a long press on this same button, so a five second press will then operate your phone finder. So let's quickly show you that. So let's just pop the phone in screen there. So let's say that we've lost a phone, no idea where, where it is. So hold this for five seconds, you'll see it say find. And then we let go at the beep like so. And that will just give it a second. That will make some obnoxious techno noise come out of our phone. Let's stop that. So you can either stop that noise through the watch by pressing, I think it's any button, but I tend to use that one, uh, or you can stop it through the actual phone itself, just go into the app and, and shut it down. So yeah, that's your phone finder. So five second press on the receiving button or bottom right button down here. Okay, so let's move on. Top left, so this is your adjust button. This kind of has two main, main sort of functions. Uh, so depending on what mode you're in, it will basically adjust, it will let you go in and adjust whatever it is you're in. So if you're in your time mode, it will go into the main adjustment settings. So you have to set up your time manually and 
and your day and year and all that kind of stuff. I'll show you that in just a second. A short press is then, uh, it will then display any reminders that are, are currently running. So it tells you that there is a reminder to view in three different ways. Firstly, when you use your light or your auto light, it will then pulse the red um, LED behind the screen, letting you know that there's something to look at. Also, if a new reminder is just started, so the morning of a new reminder day or something like that, you'll get REM across the dot matrix screen here rather than the date and the month. And the third way it tells you is there's a flashing dot just there. That's not normally flashing, it only flashes when there's a reminder. So yeah, so we, we do a short press of this button here and it reveals our reminder, G-Shocks rule. There you go, so that's a short press of that button there. Pretty straightforward stuff. And then yeah, like I said, a long press will then go into the full breakdown of our, our settings. So we wait until the beep, then we let go. And then what we can do, if we press this bottom left one here, we can cycle through everything. Let's just get back to our start. So we have quite a few different options in there, as you can tell. So it starts on home time. So this is this is setting up your, your actual home destination. Uh, you wanna make sure that's right. I'm in the UK, so I have London, so that's correct. And then we have uh, DST, so daylight savings, where you have that on or off or on auto. Uh, then we have seconds, hours, minutes, year, date, month, and then we have our 12 hour or 24 hour, and our date, date, month, month, or month, date, date. So I'm cycling through these with this one, and you can adjust it with this bottom right one, like so, on all of these, carrying on. And then we have, yeah, the language for the dot matrix display, uh, key, so that's whether you have your uh, a noise when you press buttons or not, the beep, um, as you might notice there, a little icon just appeared to let me know I'm in a mute mode. Let's turn that back off. And then our light between two or four seconds, how long it shines the, the light, the backlight. And then receiving, so this is whether it does the, um, it does the auto check for your uh, receiving signal. And then power saving, on or off. Uh, I tend to have that on, it just puts the watch to sleep basically if it knows it's not being used, and then we're back to the start, and then we can come out like so. So as you can tell, you can you can control and adjust everything pretty much apart from reminders. Reminders you have to do through the phone, everything else you can uh, do through the watch itself. Um, it's just a lot fit more fiddly, there's lots of sort of button combinations, so it's, it is generally a lot easier to do it through the app if, uh, if you have, you know, if you have a smartphone basically. So yeah, so that's that top left one there. Moving on, uh, our mode button down here. So a single press cycles through the different modes, which I'll show you in just a second. And then a long press, as I showed you earlier, that uh, connects um, a permanent connection, permanent Bluetooth connection to your phone. So you can then access your watch settings, you know, entirely everything uh, through the, the phone, through the smartphone app. Uh, so let's just cycle through the modes. So our first one, so our world time, we can cycle through our presets using this bottom right button here. So let's just get to, I don't know, Paris, that'll do. So in, in world time, uh, it, unlike some of the G-Shocks, the one, these ones with the, the dot matrixes tend to have the, uh, your local time, so your home time up here, and then your local time down here. So it displays both basically. So it's quite nice that it can do that because yeah, not all of them have the, option to have both on the screen at the same time. So yeah, so this is Paris and then this is London basically because that's my home time. So yeah, that's so we cycle through the the options here and we can hold as in all these modes we can hold this this top button down to adjust uh you know all the nitty gritty bits and bobs. But let's just show you the kind of overall um functionality. Alarms again we can cycle through our presets here. So if we want to turn that one on we press that one there. So that's now, now we'll come on at 2.45 in the afternoon. You might have noticed on the icon here, the ears, or what I call them, the ears suddenly appeared around this icon. So the outside bits are the standard alarm. The inner bit, that tiny little dot in the middle there, that is the signal alarm, which is the hourly chime, basically. So let me just show you that. So if I cycle through to um, our signal so that's the snooze let's turn that on just to show you so if we turn the snooze on we also get another icon so yeah 
just there, SNZ. Let's turn that back off. Just thought I'd show you that one. And if we move on to the next one, our signal. So if we turn signal off, which is our hourly chime, you'll notice that icon has just changed so that it has no center centered central sort of dot bit there so yeah so the outside ear is the kind of standard alarm the the central bit is the hourly chime and then yeah you have a snz down here for your snooze so yeah i thought I'd just show you what these each one of these different little icons are and what they what they mean let's um turn that first oh it's on the second one let's turn that one went past it back to the start there we go Turn that one off, and then turn that one off as well. So that's no alarms running at all. Okay, next mode. Then we have stopwatch, pretty straightforward. Down here is your start and stop. While it's running, if we press this one up here, we have split time. And then if we press stop, and then we press this one, we get a reset. So it's just those, those two buttons there, basically, control all of that. Next mode, then we have timer. So start and stop, bottom right down here. And then once it's stopped, we can reset it up here or we can hold this one down and adjust it. Just like in each one of these, you hold this one down and you can adjust whatever mode you're in. It's pretty straightforward stuff. And then we're back to our home screen. So, so there you go. I think I've pretty much demonstrated everything this little, little powerhouse can do now. So let's just uh, summarize. So yeah, I, th I think uh, in terms of um, value features versus cost, uh, these uh, these ones really are the I think the the best in in, in my opinion. Some some of you may disagree. If clearly, if you don't need all this Bluetooth uh, connectivity and interactivity with your your smartphone, you really don't need one of these. Just get one of the the cheaper ones or maybe the standard multiband ones rather than the Bluetooth ones. Uh, but for my money, I, I think they they definitely offer more value. Let's go on to a couple of criticisms because not everything is perfect with any product, and there is a couple of tiny niggles with this one. So my main gripe. Uh, and it's not really, it's not major, but it, it will be obviously subjective to you. But as you might have noticed when I was operating this, um, I do have to kind of jam my fingernail into the buttons a little bit. They're not the easiest buttons to operate. They're slightly recessed and they're slightly small. So if you've got, I mean, I've got quite sort of medium small hands. Um, they're quite sort of long fingers, but kind of pointy. So they're quite good at dealing with small fiddly things. Uh, clearly, if you had smaller hands, it would be, be a little bit easier. But if you've got big, fat sausage fingers, then these buttons, you may find them quite frustrating and quite irritating. Um, that is pretty much, much my, my only half major gripe. It's not a deal breaker for me. Like, it's totally doable. But you do find yourself jamming your fingernail into the buttons rather than a sort of, you know, a press with the sort of, you know, the fat of your finger kind of thing. So... Yeah, like I said, depending on you uh, and your, your hands, you may find these slightly annoying and slightly frustrating, or you may find them absolutely fine if you've got delicate little hands. Um, anyway, so that is my my only major sort of criticism, and, and obviously it's not a it's not a deal breaker for me, um, and it is a kind of subjective thing anyway, so make of that what you will. My only other slight criticism, I think, would be that I think the reminders in the app they could have given us maybe like 20 slots, 20 presets. Uh, that would have been nice because yeah, I think for, for if you, if like me, you want to use them for birthdays or something, five slots isn't really enough. So I think, yeah, and as that's something that, which is running in the app in your smartphone, I don't see why they couldn't actually adjust that and give us an update with more, more options and more functionality. Uh, but you know, that's just a guess. That's just a guess. And it's a very, very minor gripe, but that was the only only other thing that I would uh, criticize about this, this watch and this and, and the app in conjunction. So there you go, guys. I hope that showed you just about everything that this little thing can do. Sorry the video was so long, but it, there's just no other way of uh, showing you everything really without, um, yeah, taking quite a long time to do it. I hope it was useful. Let me know your thoughts. Um, for my money, like I said, I think this is a really good value option and I would highly recommend it. Uh, one last thing I'll mention is on the G-Shock Metal range, the buttons on those are slightly larger. So if you don't mind paying twice as much again or more for one of the metals, 
then you will have slightly more usable buttons. I mean, there's pros and cons with that as with, as with everything, but if you've got more easy to press buttons, it's going to be more easy to accidentally press them. I mean, I don't know how likely that is, but you know, these ones, it's probably very, very unlikely you're ever going to press these uh, accidentally because they are uh, recessed into these little buffer sort of corners there. But yeah, the metals do have some slightly larger buttons. So that is one my one major complaint about this watch and the metals don't do it. But then you are paying twice as much for the metals and they are going to be heavier and a little bit more not quite as comfortable as, as these ones, the GWBs. Uh, so, you know, there's that as well. There's, there's something to weigh up there um, for you. I suggest maybe go into a shop and test out the buttons on the G-Shocks. But I mean, you know, this is more in line with the traditional G-Shock Square. So if you're used to that and you had no problems with those buttons, you'll be fine with this one. It's just that, yeah, they have improved the metal range of buttons just to make them slightly larger and slightly easier to operate. Anyway, I think I've covered absolutely everything. Like I said, I, I would give this a big thumbs up and I'm very happy with it. Uh, but yeah, make up your own mind. Um, any questions, stick them in the comments down below. And yeah, I hope that was useful. By the way, you might have noticed I've got this little one as one of my new watches. I will be doing a video on this, this little Chinese uh, pilot's watch, which I think is absolutely a really, really nice little, little unit. Obviously entirely different to a G-Shock. But yeah, you might have noticed it flashing into the video there, so I thought I'd just mention it. Anyway, guys, peace out, and I hope that was useful. Um, catch you later.